Hello everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to present my lecture entitled Enzymes, Fundamentals and Application. Uh, this is Abdullah Ismail. Uh, I would like this lecture to be beneficial. Uh, at the outset, I would like to present the main points on which today's lecture based on. Introduction to enzymology, what are enzymes, nomenclature, uh, nature, and structure of enzymes, uh, classification of enzymes, mode of action, and enzymes cofactors. Uh, then, production of enzymes, especially microbial enzymes, which, which, are, which are used uh, widely in the uh, industrial application of enzymes. Uh, enzymes immobilization and then finally industrial enzymes uh, to estimate the importance of enzymes as we know enzymes are responsible for bringing about almost all chemical reactions in living organisms and without enzymes these reactions would occur at much slower rate relative to the base of metabolism for example the oxidation of fatty acid to carbon dioxide and water is not a gentle process it requires extreme of pH high temperatures and corrosive chemicals but in the living cells such a reaction takes place smoothly and rapidly within a narrow range of pH and temperature. <coughs> uh, through attempts to understand more about enzymes, what are enzymes, what they do, and how, and how they do it, uh, the enzymes are a biocatalyst. They can be defined as the biological catalyst that accelerate the rate of chemical reaction without be consumed or produced from the reaction under a specific conditions of temperature and pH. Simply, the substrate in the presence of enzyme, which is a biocatalyst, converted to product. Enzymes are organic substances are mostly protein in nature. There are non-proteinic enzymes called ribozymes they are RNA in nature which target phosphodiester bond uh, they are highly molecular weight high molecular weight compounds made up principally of a chains of amino acids linked together by peptide bond as we see in the figure Enzymes can be denatured and precipitated with salts, solvents, and other agents. They have molecular weight ranging from 10,000 to 2 million. Uh, here we go to talk about the specificity of enzymes. Enzymes are very and the degree of specificity so based on this variation we can uh, categorize and classify the, specific, the specificity of enzyme into five distinct distinct types of specificity number one is the absolute specificity in this type the enzymes catalyzes only one reaction as we see here urea uh, in the presence of water by the action of urease converted to ammonia and carbon dioxide number two is the dual specificity there are two types of dual specificity in the first one the enzyme catalyzed uh, the biochemical reaction for two different substrates uh, in the second one, the enzyme catalyzes a biochemical reaction for only one substrate by 
two different reactions. For example, xanthine oxidase act on xanthine and hypoxanthine, as we see in the first and the uh, uh, left figure. The hypoxanthine uh, converted to xanthine by the action of xanthine oxidase, and the xanthine converted to uric acid by also the action of the same enzyme uh, xanthine oxidase. Uh, for example, the example for the second type of dual specificity, uh, which is the, the enzyme, uh, act on two different, only one substrate by two different actions. As we see here, isocitrate converted to oxalosaxinate by the action of isocitrate dehydrogenase and oxalosaxinate converted to alpha keto ketoglutarate by the action of the same enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. Uh, uh, number three of enzyme specificity is linkage relative or bond specificity. In this one, the enzyme attacks particular type of chemical bond regardless uh, the rest of molecular structure. For example, peptidase attacks any peptide bond lipase attacks carboxylic bond as we see here in the figures uh, number four group specificity in this one the enzyme will act only one certain type of bond that form it of a specific functional group such as pepsin uh, the example pepsin hydrolyzes hydrolyze a peptide bond in which the amino group is contributed by an aromatic amino acid like phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, and the pepsin cleavage sites uh, only the site which contains phenylalanine, tyrosine, or tryptophan. Number five of enzyme specificity is the stereochemical or optical specificity. The enzyme will act on a particular steric or optical isomer, for example, L-alanine oxidase, which attacks L-alanine. As we see here in the figure, the enzyme can attack L-alanine, but cannot attack D-alanine. Uh, the production of enzymes. All living organisms, uh, animals, plants, and microorganisms are able to produce enzymes. The enzymes are produced inside the, cell, the living cells or outside the living cells. And they catalyze the biochemical reaction intra or extracellular. Often, the industrial microbial enzymes are produced extracellularly. Uh, structure of enzymes. Enzyme may be simple in the structure or complex in their structure. Uh, the simplest structure of enzyme uh, composed of only protein, but the complex enzymes, which is called holoenzyme, composed of two main parts. The part number one is apoenzyme, which is protein in nature, and cofactor, which is non-protein in nature. Uh, the cofactors may be organic compounds or metal. The organic compounds loosely attach it to the enzyme and mostly drive it from food, like vitamins. Uh, the metal cofactors, like iron, manganese, and magnesium may be attached loosely to the enzyme and called metal-activated enzyme or conjugated to the enzyme and in this case is called metalloenzyme. Enzymes nomenclature or enzyme terminology. There are four ways to nominate the enzyme. The old names not indicating any information about the enzyme. For example, pepsin and trypsin. The 
second way to nominate the enzyme to describe the substrate name and the prefix as for example sacrase and lactase third way to nominate the enzymes is the substrate name action and sub prefix as for example lactate dehydrogenase and pyruvate carboxylase number four enzyme code according to uh, enzyme commission this is done by international union of biochemistry to provide us with the full knowledge about the enzyme for example lipase which is ac which is called ac 3113 as we see here the digit number one refers to the enzyme class the digit number two refers to uh, the attacked group the third digit refers to subclass of the enzyme and the fourth digit refers to the uh, substrate type and the example of uh, lipase which is 3113 uh, 3 refers to the hydrolysis which is the group of enzyme uh, the, digit, the digit 2 1 acting uh, refers to it, uh, he, uh, its act on ester bond the digit 3 which is 1 refers to the subclass which is carboxylic ester hydrolysis the digit 4 refers to the substrate so we can say the enzyme act on triglycerol will, uh, and it takes number 3 <coughs> Uh, mode of enzyme action uh, the biochemical reaction uh, the function of enzyme that they accelerate the chemical reaction but how by decreasing the activation energy so the biochemical reaction goes through three stages initial state which needs energy transition state and then final state to understand the mode of enzyme action, it's necessary to know two main aspects, energy changes and enzyme active site, which is called catalytic site. Energy changes in the non-catalyzed reaction in the absence of catalyst or enzyme, the temperature of the reaction must be raised up to increase the initial state energy to start up the reaction or by increasing the concentration of the substrate but this is impossible in the living cells however in the presence of enzyme no need to raise up the temperature energy of activation is defined as the amount of energy required by the substrate to be raised from the initial state to the transition state as we see here in the figure enzyme lower the energy barrier so so the uh, reaction goes faster in the presence of enzymes the reaction would be could be done in more energy favorable alternate so the energy needs to convert the pro the, uh, the reactant to the product is lower than uh, the chemical reaction or the absence of enzyme uh, so the energy uh, required in the initial state and to reach it, to reach the transition state is much lower than in the absence of enzyme uh, chemistry of the active sites enzyme active site is called catalytic site it is the site of the enzyme that attaches the substrate via the functional group of the amino acids located in the active site to understand how the active site attach the substrate there are two hypotheses explain uh, this uh, attachment number one fisher hypothesis and uh, called key theory 
also called key lock theory. In this theory, the active site is rigid and the pre shaped complementary to the substrate. This hypothesis is suitable for the absolute specific enzymes. The second theory uh, called induced fit theory and called also Cushland hypothesis. In this theory, the active site is not rigid and also not pre shaped by indu but induced by the substrate configuration and adapted uh, its shape by applying conformational changes to bind the substrate. This hypothesis is suitable for less specific enzymes. Now, we will talk about the classification of enzymes. There are six group or six main categories of enzymes. Oxidoreductases, transferases, hydrolases, lyases or synthases, isomerases, and then ligases or synthetases. The group number one is the oxidoreductases. Oxidoreductases is the group of enzymes that catalyze the transfer of electrons from one molecule, uh, the reductant, also called the electron donor, to another, the oxidant, and also called the electron acceptor. This group of enzymes usually utilize NADB and NADH as a cofactor, as we see here in the uh, example, pyruvic acid by uh, in the presence of lactate dehydrogenase uh, converted to lactic acid in the presence of NADH, which is co uh, uh, converted to NAD, to produce NAD. Uh, the group number two is the trans uh, tran uh, transferases. The transferases are a class of enzymes that act on the transfer of a specific functional group like methyl or glycoside group from one molecule, which is donor, to another, which is acceptor. Like here, as we see in the two uh, examples, uh, uh, pyroxidyl phosphate uh, convert the aspartate to oxaloacetate or alpha glutamate to glutamate uh, and this is one this one is uh, reverse this this reaction is a reversible reaction aspartate and alpha glutamate can be converted to oxaloacetate and glutamate by the action of pyridoxal phosphate and aspartate transaminase uh, also, the second example is the glucose in the presence of ATP by the action of glucokinase can be converted to uh, glucose 6-phosphate and ADB. Uh, category number, four, number three is hydrolases. Hydrolases are a class of enzymes that commonly perform the breaking down of chemical bonds in the presence of water which typically results in dividing a large molecules to a smaller molecules. Some common examples of hydrolases are lipase, peptidases, phosphatases, amylases, and nucleosidases. Uh, group number four is lyases. Lyase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breaking down of various chemical bonds by means other than hydrolysis and oxidation often forming a new double bond uh, or new ring structure as we see here in the example pyruvate by the action of pyruvate decarboxylase in the presence of the proton hydrogen uh, converted to acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide group number five is isomerase Isomerases are a general class of enzymes that convert a molecule from one isomer to another. Isomerases facilitate intramolecular rearrangements in which bonds are broken and reformed. This is only one substrate yielding one product. This product has the same molecular formula and the substrate as the substrate, but differs in bond connectivity as we see here in the two examples, malate 
can be converted to fumarate by the action of malleate isomerase and L-alanine can be converted to D-alanine by alanine racemase. Uh, up to now, the application of isomerases in sugar manufacturing is the most common. Glucose isomerase catalyzes the transesterification, the transformation of D glucose to D fructose, which is a key part in high fructose corn syrup production and results in a high yield fructose with minimal side products, as we see in the reaction. Group number six ligases. Ligases are enzymes catalyze the joining of two molecules together coupled with the hydrolysis of diphosphate bond and the ATP molecule or similar triphosphate molecules. Catalyze the reaction in which two chemical groups are joined ligated with the use of energy as we see here in the examples, the uh, fragments of DNA is ligated by the DNA ligase to produce a sticky end DNA, one strand. Uh, and second uh, example, the carbonate and pyruvate, in the presence of pyruvate carbolate, uh, carboxylase converted to oxaloacetate. Now, we will talk about the production of microbial enzyme. The production of microbial enzyme usually taking place by the fermentation but here we have to mention uh, that uh, the, the, the production of enzyme may be extracellular or intracellular if it's intracellular so we have to recover the cell and make cell disruption and exclusion of cell tepri and then concentration of cell free extract by salt or solvent and then purification of enzyme if extracellular in case of extracellular enzyme just cell exclusion and concentrate the cell free extract by uh, salts like ammonium sulfate or solvents like ethanol and acetone and then purification uh, by different ways of purification uh, steps uh, now we will talk about the production of a special enzyme the special enzymes here is more suitable for the production of uh, fine chemicals, uh, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, and these special enzymes uh, provide us uh, the ability to, to use these enzymes in the harsh uh, industrial conditions and provide us the stability in high temperature, stability in organic solvents, stability in alkaline conditions, stability in acidic conditions. So, to achieve these special criteria in the produced enzyme for industry, there are three main protocols in this regard, gene engineering, protein engineering, and immobilization. In gene engineering, using the recombinant DNA technology for heterogeneously expressing enzyme genes in commonly used industrial strains such as E. coli, P. cabastoris, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and Aspergillus oryzae, and to provide overexpression of the enzyme under interest of bulk for bulk production, and to avoid the extreme cultivation uh, knee condition needed by the wild type strain, as we see here in the uh, figure. Uh, the DNA and vector mix it together to uh, to produce uh, to uh, the DNA ligase added to ligate the vector and the DNA by recombinant DNA technology and recon recombinant DNA molecules introduced into the bacterial cell and the bacterial cells uh, then uh, replicate and divide to give us more and more copies of the desired enzymes. Number two is the protein engineering. 
two major protein engineering approaches, namely rational design and directed evolution, have been applied to improve the previously mentioned properties like thermostability, organic solvent tolerance, alkalo stability, acido stability, and halo felicity. Uh, although both approaches can improve the functional properties of enzyme, the choice of method depends on the availability of knowledge such as the structure function relationship of the specific enzyme and high throughput screening approaches. Number one is the rational design uh, of proteins requires a prior knowledge of the structure function relationship of enzyme. This information provides a concrete knowledge based to rationally select potential modification sites on the target enzyme. X-ray crystallography uh, is needed to understand the structure of enzyme. Uh, the second way to perform uh, protein engineering is directed evolution. Directed evolution doesn't require a detailed understanding uh, of the structural features of enzyme. The most commonly adopted approaches for performing directed evolution start with error-prone PCR uh, and DNA shuffling. Uh, random mutation and randomly mutated products then undergo directed evolution process by imposing selection pressure on the produced constructs. The survivors of the screening process and then analyze to reveal enhancement of desirable characteristics. The <clears throat> protocol number three for uh, uh, obtaining the special enzyme is the immobilization of enzyme. The immobilization of enzyme is a commercial, the commercial utilization of free enzymes is often hampered by the lack of operational stability, high cost and non-reusability. So the immobilization of enzyme is an option to overcome these obstacles. Therefore, increase, the increased and notable interest in the enzyme's immobilization is based on factors that have been widely discussed and proven to be beneficial for enhancing the stability of the biocatalytic system and the presence of organic solvents and in high temperature reactions and also improving the mass transfer rate of the reactants and the possibility of achieving easy recovery of the catalyst under different environmental reaction conditions. The immobilization of enzymes, we will talk about the support material or immobilized material. Uh, the immobilized material uh, must provide us low cost, chemical thermal stability, renewability, high affinity to uh, enzymes, uh, inertness, uh, physical strength, availability, uh, the presence of active groups. Uh, the supporting material can be classified in uh, the classic material, which is previously uh, used to immobilize enzymes, can be categorized into two main categories, organic materials and inorganic materials. The organic materials, biopolymers or uh, synthetic polymers, uh, but inorganic materials may be inorganic oxides, minerals, and carbon materials. And the new materials uh, can be categorized into three main categories, the organic materials, hybrid materials, and inorganic materials. There are four ways or four protocols to immobilize the enzyme into or into the support material. The physical absorption, no need to uh, just uh, physically absorb it to the surface of the, sub the, the support, the enzyme physically absorb it to the surface of the support. Number two, physical entrapment and encapsulation. Uh, in this way, the enzyme encapsulated uh, and entrapped into the support matrix. Uh, number three is the covalent binding. In this, the way, in this 
method the uh, substrate covalently binded to the enzyme by chemical bond uh, the protocol number uh, four is the cross-linking here uh, a cross-linker must be used like glutaral to uh, uh, connect the, the enzyme molecules together and to the support now we will talk about general application of microbial enzymes the general application of microbial enzymes we can divide into three main uh, ways through main groups in the industry like bulb and paper food and beverages pharmaceutical and chemical textile uh, leather tanning protein hydrolysis detergent starch and fuel production in the environmental impact of enzymes uh, it could be used to detect of toxic pollutants and to degrade the wastes of the environment number three is in agriculture purposes uh, like agro processing animal feed additives animal feed from agricultural wastes and agrochemicals now some details of the use of enzymes in uh, many industries we will start with a textile industry uh, raw cotton undergoes various uh, processes such as scouring bleaching polishing and dyeing before it's converted into yarn and fabric these processes consume large amounts of energy water and chemicals making the textile industry a resource consuming and polluting industry therefore cleaner processes are giving considerable attention in the textile industry in order to manage resource insufficiency and pollution problems some of the enzymatic solutions which have been subjected to solve such problems here in the flow chart of the textile industry the textile industry goes through many steps to the final product desizing scouring bleaching dyeing finishing and then get the final product is the fabric in the desizing uh, step alpha amylase usually used in this step pectine is used in the scouring step catalase used in the bleaching step peroxidase used after dyeing step to remove the excess of dye uh, acid cellulase used in the finishing step for polishing the final product in the textile industry sorry uh, number two the application of enzyme in the detergent industry the surfactants are a primary constituent of detergents which remove uh, stains from uh, the clothes uh, during laundry washing uh, moreover uh, surfactants released into the environment after washing they are toxic to the aquatic species unless they are removed in sufficient in efficient wastewater treatment plant so enzyme has the capacity to degrade strains at low uh, washing temperature and are less toxic than uh, surfactants and are used as a supplement in detergents protease lipase amylase and cellulase they bleed surfactants in the detergent industry the results show with that the impact of enzyme production is low compared with the impact of surfactant production and that use of enzyme saves energy in the use of in the use phase and reduces 
contribution in aquatic toxicity in the disposal phase. Now, uh, we will talk about the application of enzymes in the production of fine chemicals, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, highly specific enzyme can, enzymes can be used as alternatives to the chemical catalysts, and the use of enzymes saves energy, chemicals, and waste generation due to the high specificity and milder reaction conditions. So some examples uh, for the application of enzymes in different chemical industries. So example number one is the toluene orthomonoxygenase. Toluene orthomonoxygenase is an enzyme which can be used to oxidize naphthalene at low temperature and pressure to produce alpha naphthol which is a key intermediate in the manufacture of dyes, herbicides, insecticides, and pharmaceuticals. Example number two is the phenylalanine. Phenylalanine deaminase is used to produce S2,3-dihydro-1-H-indole-2-carboxylic acid, which is a key intermediate for the production of antihypertension drugs. Example number three is the penicillin amidase. Penicillin amidase is used to produce six amino penicillinic acid is an intermediate product for the antibiotic production. Example number four is lipase for the production of cosmetics. Emulant esters are used as a good moisturizing agent in the cosmetic production. So, lipase is alternatively used, used to catalyze the reaction uh, via the transesterification trans of vegetable oil and alcohol instead of using tin oxalate. Now, we will talk about the application of enzymes in food industry. Many, many, many enzymes are used in the uh, food industry uh, in a large scale. So the requirements in food industry are to provide a very large quanti uh, quantities uh, of cost sensitive products. In this case, the cost of biocatalysts must be low Therefore, it has to show uh, a good operational stability, allowing for a large number of cycles to be performed. Uh, very often in the food industry, the continuous flow operational configuration is preferred over patch process. So, especially when large quantities of the products are to be made. Examples of immobilized enzymes used at large scale in, the con in continuous process for the production of food stuff, such as high uh, fructose corn syrup, which we mentioned previously in this literature, but better, better analogs, allulose, galacto-oligosaccharides, and so on. So, Glucose isomerase, beta galactosidase, epimerase, and lipase are examples for the industrial immobilized enzyme, and we will talk about the rule of everyone for one example. Uh, number one, glucose, uh, deglucose isomerase for the production of high fructose corn syrup. The production of so called high fructose corn syrup represents the, the large commercial uh, process involving an immobilized enzyme, both in terms of the amount of enzyme used as well as the volume of the product produced. In fact, over 500 tons of immobilized glucose isomerase are consumed annually, enabling the production of approximately 
10 million tons of high fructose uh, corn syrup per year. As we see here in the reaction, the glucose converted to fructose by the action of glucose isomerase. The example number two is abimerase for the production of allulose. Allulose is a zero calorie sweetener and has a sweetness suggested to be similar to dextrose. D-allulose is uh, the C3 epimer of d -fractose. and the structural difference between allulose and fructose results in allulose not being metabolized by the human body and thus having zero calorie zero calories therefore allulose is a good candidate as a sweet bulking agent having a similar properties to typical monosaccharides as we see here the fructose converted to allulose by the action of ebimerase enzyme the example number uh, three is the beta galactosidase for lactose hydrolysis as we, all of us know uh, the removal of lactose from milk and milk products makes them acceptable to lacto lactose intolerant people so the dairy industry has devoted high resources to develop the hydrolysis of lactose by beta galactosidase enzyme as we see here in the reaction biochemical reaction lactose by the action of beta galactosidase broken down to galactose and glucose uh, now we will talk about the application of enzymes in bulb and paper industry paper and <coughs> paper and uh, paper pour can be produced from either a virgin resource of wood from recycled materials the traditional bulb and paper production process is based on chemicals and mechanical processes uh, which consumes a large amounts of raw materials and energy and creates considerable pressure on the environment this flow chart uh, explain the various steps of the uh, bulb and paper industry and all these steps uh, uh, and the enzyme can be used enzymes can be used in all steps of bulb and paper in the industry uh, as we see here the examples of enzymes used in uh, bulb and paper industry in the refine and uh, number the example number one cellulase for refining and de-inking in the refining step the energy consumption for the refining process can be reduced by softening the wood fibers which uh, uh, with a cellulase enzyme prior to processing instead of using grooved metal plates the bulb from recycled number two the bulb from recycled uh, paper contains ink that needs to be removed before the paper can be used again cellulase enzyme in the de-inking process softens the recycled bulb and facilitates the release of ink instead of using chemicals such as sodium hydroxide sodium metabisulfite and hydrogen peroxide uh, example number two is lactase for degrading lignin the main constituents of wood are cellulose lignin and xylan in paper making lignin is a substance that gives a dark color in the bulb and it needs to be removed to make bright paper quantities qualities in traditional chemical bulbing lignin is removed by adding large amounts of chlorine and alkali chemicals in a process called bleaching alternatively lignin degrading enzyme lactase can be used in the bleaching process example number three is esterase for the hydrolysis of stickies <coughs> 
uh, agglomerates of glue, which is called the stickies, are major obstacle in the recycled paper processing because they can cause a hole, they can cause holes uh, and paper breaks, resulting in poor paper quality and frequent machine stops for cleaning. The conventional approach of stickies is uh, of control uh, is by mechanical and chemical cleaning of the op of operational equipment, which leads uh, to electricity steam solvent consumption. An alternative way of controlling stickies is to use an esterase enzyme, which hydrolyzes the polyvinyl acetate in the glues. Use of this enzyme reduces energy consumption uh, during frequent production stops and reduces solvent use, thereby saving energy and chemicals. Now, we will talk about uh, lipase and the biodiesel production. What is a biodiesel? Biodiesel is a monoalkyl ester of long chain fatty acids. So how we can get the resource of producing of, of biodiesel? The resource of biodiesel production is the triglyceride. So we need to convert this triglyceride molecule to the molecules of biodiesel. This is simply uh, performed by uh, lipase. So the lipase catalyzes this, uh, this reaction in three steps. The step number one, uh, the triglyceride converted to, to, to diglyceride, one molecule of diglyceride in the presence of alcohol, and produce one molecule of biodiesel. And in the second step, the diglyceride converted to monoglyceride and produce one more molecule of biodiesel. And then in the presence of alcohol, the monoglyceride converted completely to glycerol and the third molecule of biodiesel. Um, there are many, many, many applications of enzymes. Uh, the time, I think the time uh, cannot allow us to talk about all the application of enzymes in industry and industrial field. So, uh, I think this is enough to highlight the application of enzymes in the textile bulb, uh, detergent, cosmetics, fine chemicals, pharmaceutical, and, bio and biofuel production. So, uh, finally, I would like to thank you so much for your attention and I hope this uh, lecture is a beneficial and thank you so much.